Hello, my name is Maggie O'Farrell, and I'd like to talk about my new novel, The Hand That First Held Mine. This novel, in a sense, has three main characters. There are two human protagonists, Lexi and Alina, but the third main character doesn't speak, doesn't eat, doesn't wear clothes, doesn't breathe, and doesn't make decisions. It is the city in which the other two live, the city of London. I wrote this book while living away from London, while missing it and thinking about it. I lived here for 12 years, and leaving it felt a little like a divorce. So in a sense the novel is a love letter to a city I left behind. It's also a love letter to a particular time and place in London's history, Soho in the 1950s, a place I'd come to know through the stark black and white images taken on its streets then. Soho was built by landowners who hoped it would become as fashionable as Mayfair and Bloomsbury, but it became instead the black sheep of London, the rowdy, dishevelled relative who had no money but had a great deal more fun. And it has, since its very inception, been irrevocably associated with music halls, fly-by-night theatres, prostitutes, and worst of all, immigrants, artists, and intellectuals. After the Second World War, Soho became home to a thriving bohemian artistic community. It was a place to escape post-war austerity, a place of daytime drinking, after-hours clubs, gossip, rivalry, and enormously significant artistic output. On an average day here, if you went into a pub or a cafe, you might have found yourself sitting next to Francis Bacon or Lucian Freud. George Melly might have been popping up the bar with Dylan Thomas or Brendan Behan. But it was a world that existed for only a very short time, just a decade or so. And the novels and poetry and paintings and journalism that came out of post-war Soho were to change Britain forever. So the more I studied the images of post-war Soho, the more I wondered if it would be possible to write someone into it. You often hear about people being airbrushed out of photographs, but I wanted to attempt this process in reverse, to make up a person and place them in this vanished world. And so the character of Lexi was conceived. I wanted to write about what it would be like to arrive in Soho from somewhere completely different. Lexi escapes rural Devon for London, desperate for excitement, for stimulation, for, as she says in the novel, the technicolour part of her life to begin. Elena, the present-day character, has this in common with Lexi. She has left her native Finland and come to London to be a painter. Elena isn't, as the novel opens, doing much painting, however, as she's recovering from the birth of her first child. Much of this novel is concerned with people whose lives change in an instant. They meet someone, or leave somewhere, or lose someone, and life is never the same again. I think motherhood is one of those moments. It's a seismic event that changes everything forever. With Alina, I wanted to write about very early motherhood. It's not something I've read in fiction before much, the oddness and elation and exhaustion of those first few weeks with a baby. I think all women who happen to be artists are haunted by that quote of Cyril Connolly's, there is no more sombre enemy of good art than the pram in the hallway. Whether or not you believe it, and I for one certainly do not, it can definitely frighten you. One other thing that interested me about having children was that it brings back your own infancy in micro detail. And I began to wonder what might happen if the details and images that came back to you were unfamiliar. Ted, Alina's boyfriend, is finding fatherhood an unsettling business. The recollections it brings forth do not fit with what he knows of his life. They involve people and places he doesn't recognise. These two stories of the hand that first held mine, although separated by time, are in the end connected. I can't tell you how, of course, but Lexi and Alina live in the same city, separated by half a century, and their lives are linked in a way that neither of them could ever have expected.